parameters in Creo Parametric are just additional pieces of information that you want to store along with the model. And this video is actually a precursor to the video on notebooks for top-down design. Some of the different uses for parameters include controlling different dimensions or features in your model. You can also use them to populate information uh, on your drawings. And also you could use them to feed information into your product lifecycle management system like Windchill. The way that you access your parameters dialog box is from the model tab, you can go to the model intent overflow menu and access the parameters command. It's also available from the tools tab right in the ribbon, but you might want to add the command to the quick access toolbar so you can quickly and easily access it from any tab in Creo Parametric. So in my parameters dialog box, if I want to create a new parameter, I'll click on the plus sign and let's change the name. Maybe I want to capture the cost of this part and that's going to be a real number. I'm going to type in a value. Let's make it $18.50. The next parameter that I'm going to create, maybe I want to capture the name of the supplier of this part. And instead of a real number, that's going to be a bunch of alphanumeric characters. So I'll change this to string. And let's type in a value of Acme. My next parameter, I can also have yes, no parameters. Maybe I want to capture whether this is designed in-house or from some outside firm. And it's going to be designed in-house, so I can change the value to yes. And the next one I'm going to create will be an integer. Later on, I'm going to write a relation to control the number of instances in a pattern. That's going to be the number of posts. And for a pattern, we can't have like a fraction of an instance. So we'll change it to integer. And I want to have six of them. Okay, the next one that I'm going to create, I want to show you that your parameters can also have units associated with them. Let me make the dialog box a little wider. And I'll click on the plus sign. And this parameter is called lead time. Maybe I want to capture how many days I need to manufacture it. And if you leave the value as real number, when you click in the unit quantity cell, you'll have a list and you can choose from all the basic and derived units in Creo Parametric. This is going to be for time. And the default unit in my model is seconds, but that's not convenient for measuring the lead time. I'm going to change to day. When I go to change the units for this parameter, I have the option of converting the value or interpreting the value. I haven't typed in a value yet, yet, so it doesn't matter. So I'll just click OK. And the value, maybe we need 14 days notice uh, for lead time. Also in this dialog box, there's a, a column for designated. And if you check designated, then these different parameters will be checked in with the model when you upload it and check it into your data management system like Windchill. And then they can be assigned to an attribute in Windchill. Also in here, we have an access column. These are full access. In other words, I can change any of these different values. If you have parameters that are driven by a relation or come from your data management system, you will not have full access to them. All right, let's click OK. Now what I want to do is I want to drive a pattern of features in my model from the parameter that I created. And to access my relations, you can get to that command from the Tools tab. But that's another one that I like to have in my Quick Access Toolbar. And in the Relations dialog box, you can actually expand local parameters and see the different parameters that you have in your model. And to write my relations, if I click on a feature, it'll show me the dimensions for the feature. And I'll click on this dimension for the number of instances. I'm going to say that this is equal to, and I could type in the name of the parameter, 
or you could use the insert selected parameter to pick it from a list and that way we have our relation written now I'll click OK and when I go to the model tab and regenerate now I have six instances of that pattern just like what was driven in that parameter num post all right last thing I want to show you you can set up what's called a restricted uh, value definition file and if I go to file options configuration editor I'm going to scroll down in my list of configuration options here's the restricted val definition uh, configuration option and it points to a text file that I have let me show that to you and here's the basic format of it so you can have your different parameters and then specify what values those parameters have in the model and one thing I want to warn you I'm making this video in October of 2018 the last time I checked there was an error in the documentation in PTC's help and so if you want a copy of my parameters file send an email to dmartin at creolwindchill.com and I'll send you this so that you won't have frustration trying to use the information from the help section which again contains an error actually a couple errors okay so to show you how this works I'm going to go back to my parameters and one of the parameters I had my restricted value definition file was one for category and I'll start typing in that name and you'll notice that right now it's set to real number I'm gonna hit the tab key and the type of the parameter automatically got changed to string based on my restricted value definition file if I go to the drop-down list here are my different values here and this is going to be a structural component and so that way I'm using a predefined parameter with a restricted list of values I hope you enjoyed this video for more information please visit www.creowindchill.com if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and also you can subscribe to the Creo Parametric YouTube channel to be informed whenever new videos are added. Thank you very much.